Morning, everyone. Uh, today we're going to talk about being a landlord. A lot of people bought a building or they um, manage a building or they're a partner in a building. And there's a couple of things I want to talk about. There's three things I'm going to suggest to you. But first, I want to talk about this shirt. I bought this shirt, and no, it doesn't have any logos on it, but it's Saturday, and we are having a Saturday. We're having a no logo Saturday just for you. But look at this thing, it's got flies all over it. Look good. So anyways, back to the show. All right, the first Saturday three, uh, three tips for if you own a real piece of real estate. The lease, the lease, it drives me crazy when people go deal lease we can use. Well, yes, I have leases from old clients, but they use their own lease. And I also have a standard lease. This is like the National Association of Realtors lease. But if you're using that lease, you don't care about a lease, and that's fine. So get your own lease made. Call an attorney. It's several hundred dollars. It'll be specific to your building and specific to what you find important. A lot of people find it really important about the timeline of getting paid. A lot of people find it really important um, about what work is being done put in the lease. So take your time, get a good lease written just for that building. It'll be well worth it in the end. So another thing that I find very important that I think every uh, building owner should have is a floor plan. They're super easy to do. You don't have to hire an architect, but what it does is it gives you very precise measurement so that forever throughout your leasing, you know the exact square footage of your building. There's a bunch of applications that you can use, mobile apps, things like that on an iPad. And so let's say you spend 500 bucks on it. That is a great investment for your property, the length that you own it. And if you sell it or as you release it, you always have those dimensions. Hey everybody, we're on item number three of things you need when you're being a landlord. Um, the shirt's killing it still, so be inspired by that. But first, you got a lease. You got an awesome lease. Second, you got the floor plan. You know what building you have. Third, you need really good organization. I would tell everyone as they buy a building, yes, you might have a managing company or something, but if you don't, even if you do, be very, very organized. All the contact information, social security numbers, keys, 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 keys. I could show you my ring of keys. Maybe I will. Um, leases, timelines, uh, triggers for renewals, things like that. Be very, 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 very organized. Have a place in your Dropbox or at the cloud that's easy to get to that has everything. And when a new tenant signs on, you dump all this stuff in, have it a spreadsheet, something like that. But be very organized with all the information that follows your building. So I'm not saying it's easy and I'm not honestly saying that everybody should be managing their own real estate and if they own a building, they should be doing all this stuff. But if you are going to own a building and be involved and manage it yourself, you gotta have a good lease. You gotta have a good floor plan. You gotta be organized. And I would encourage you to take a lot of time and get that done. If you need help with it, ask someone to help you. If you can't figure all this out, hire a management company. But that's my advice. Three things you need to do if you're a landlord for a building. Thanks. Have a great Saturday.